You are listening to The New Man, Beyond the Macho Jerk and the New Age Wimp. Your host is men's coach, Trip Lemire. Have you been on autopilot and now realize that your life isn't what you wanted it to be? Would you have to take a pay cut in order to experience more meaningful work? And is your sense of playfulness dying on the vine? Today, I have a conversation with a guy who's fed up with his career. He's able to point his finger at many reasons why he feels so dissatisfied. He's burning out. For him, it's the same shit, different day routine. And he believes he needs to do something drastic in order to get out of this downward spiral. And that's when the conversation takes a turn. We go deep. This conversation is an example of why I love coaching so much. Because as we dig deeper, we begin to reveal what he's truly missing and how he's the only one who can give himself permission to make this change for himself. Why does this matter? Oftentimes, we're allowed to believe that our problem is one thing when it's actually another. We can spend years and tons of money and tons of stress trying to solve this problem when the real solution, the real opportunity, is right in front of us the whole time. So as you listen, I invite you to consider how your perception of the world and the version of you that you're bringing to the world might be limiting you far more than the problems you think that you have. Let's see. What you're about to hear is an actual coaching call. The person being coached volunteered and gave explicit permission to have our conversation recorded for this podcast. I feel like I've lost connection. Um, I, okay. I work in the super high end home business and for 25 years now I've been doing that. And I'm just, there's a couple things happening. One outside of me is like craftsmanship is changing. The regard for it is not the same as it used to be. It's more about just getting things done and then reselling them for more than you bought them for. And then I'm just like, I'm kind of aging out of the things that, that that used to make me feel connected to what I do. And so I guess that's where I'm like, huh, I, I could use some perspective. Okay. Got it. What, what's got the most juice for you then? Where would you like to like to dive in? The, what has the most use is like what to do. What do I do? Like, I, I feel like I'm caught in the same day, the same week, the same month, time after time. And I, I don't know where to look to go. All right. This is where I, the, here's the, the beginning of the trail hmm. to this peak I want to get to. And Let's play with this idea, this peak you want to get to. So even though we're not quite sure what that is, what do you imagine would be different on that peak? What, what, what's happening on that peak that's not happening in your life right now? More sense of fulfillment with like what I do with my time, like who I serve, right? Um, right now, like the houses I, I, now I'm doing management for the houses, um, and it's the same thing. Like these people come from California. They, they make a bunch of trouble about what they're going to bathroom fixtures. They're going to pick out, you know, they come live in the house for six weeks for two years and then they sell it. Um, and I would rather, um, like work for the habitat for humanity and build like a six unit low income house structure. Mm -hmm. and have you know the people who, who move into it just be like oh thank you you know and they're actually going to live there um and and just you know get my hands on something that people are using okay. and you know take the skill and experience i have and direct it toward more of that yeah i hear that so taking the skill taking the experiences you have and being able to translate into into something that actually means something. It's it's one thing for you to get paid for the work, but I hear that for you, you want your work to mean something to the people that um, are using it or taking uh, that have access to it. Correct. 
Okay. Yeah. In that equation is, you know, the money here is outstanding, right? The money with Habitat for Humanity is not. So there's where the, like, the trepidation comes in. How do I bridge that gap I'm going to create by leaving this market? Okay. So, so the way that you're framing it right now is that in order to do work that's meaningful, you would have to leave, completely leave what you've got. Um, or transition between it while developing something on the side of it that continues the income stream where it needs to be. Got it. And, and I'll, I'll play stupid here. I'm good at this. Uh, and the problem with that is, um, I, I just, I, I don't have the time at the moment to like put all that into action. Okay. Like I just started doing, um, project management. So that's been, that's been consuming a lot of my time. I also have a six year old who is a very high energy child and that consumes the rest of my time. Okay. So this, this, this idea of wanting more meaning or wanting your work to have more meaning, is it, I get that it would be great to have your work be more appreciated and to have the, the people that are um, hiring you to appreciate your work more and also hear how important it is for you to have this stable income and the amount of time that you have in this work is it seems that everything's kind of shoehorning in that the work has to be has to also be the place where this meaning comes from how how fixed are those two things together they're they're not cemented together um i i, I think i hold on to the work aspect of it cuz i've spent so much time gaining this experience um, and I would like to share it and use it. Um, so it's tied to it that way. But like, if I could find another way, you know, to be appreciated, or I, I don't even know if it's that much of appreciation. It's part appreciation and part feeling satisfied with what's going on around me and how I'm in, interacting with it, like my part in it. That sounded deeper than just wanting people to say you're doing nice work. So you, what's going on around you? It sounds like there, there's, I, I sensed it in your voice earlier about these people coming from California and they don't want that. There, there was some, yeah. there was some eh, in there. Yeah. I'm done with it. Like I'm, 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 I'm on the cusp of burnout okay. and it's affecting my, it's affecting the way I interact with my professional life. Yeah. Okay. And that's like, I'm sure you hear that every day. Yeah, I want to help you come to the, the, you know, and there might be even stuff that's underneath the burnout, right? But I want to help us really identify what we're truly dealing with here because we could help you be paid well for this work. But if you're still burned out uh, or there's something, whatever's causing that burnout doesn't get addressed, then you're just making more money and people are saying nice work. And then you're calling me again in six months going, I don't know why I'm not a pre, I, I don't still don't feel like something's right. Mm -hmm. I get those phone mm -hmm. calls too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So tell me a little bit about the burnout then. To, to start off with, it's three hours of driving a day. That's a lot of driving. Um, it's a beautiful drive, but there are some days when it's super dangerous with the snow and the air, airport shuttle drivers. And so I just, I, I, and I'm spending, you know, the resources to get me back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then I think the other part of the burnout is, is, is what I said earlier, like, the regard for craftsmanship in the custom home world is shifting. And so it's like here, I thought I would get to my fifties and I'd be like handing off the knowledge and experience I've accumulated to younger people. And they're just like, I don't care how you do this. I just want to get it done. Is it that you're being, you know, that, that this next generation is coming through that's bothering you or is that the next generation is coming through and they don't have an appreciation for where you are and who you are and what you have to, to offer? Yeah, that that's mainly it. Is th there's a, there is a new generation coming up, and they ju they just don't seem to want to engage with previous experience in a meaningful way. There's a few you'll get of these younger guys that are willing to learn and listen and and um, try things without contesting you, uh, but by and large, they're just like, no, I know how to do this. Get out of the way. Yeah. So you're up this creek now. Well, yeah, it, it does. It does sort of feel like I'm up a creek. I don't want to resent what I do. 
Mm-hmm. And that's starting to feel like I spend more time being like, man, what happened here? Yeah. You know? It, it also has a sense of powerlessness to it. Like I, I can't do anything. I can't say anything. I can't hold anybody accountable for this. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay. And I think we could maybe cut to the chase quicker if I say that I, I didn't, like, I didn't start my like in my twenties, I didn't say, I'm going to be a finished carpenter. That's what I want to do. You know, I was, I was in live professional theater and I kind of, I kind of aged out of that because you can't really make a lot of money in that world, but it was super fun. Right. And the people were amazing. Right. And it was like opening nights would come and you would just feel like you were levitating, you know? And uh, you, I mean, you're a musician, you know, um, the performance, I mean, there's nothing like performance, even as a, as a, as someone who's just making the set, mm-hmm. um, it is electrifying. Um, so I guess like I did this because it supported my life and I could put my hands to use cause I'm skilled that way. Mm. Right. It wasn't what I aspired to. Right. And now I'm getting to that point in my life where I'm just like, I, I want to be closer to my aspirations. Right. Okay. I just get a great sense of satisfaction when I see people like connect and learn, um, enjoy themselves. Right. I think that's what drew me to theater um, in the beginning was like, there's always like theater well done puts the audience. Like I remember sitting in a, in a show called how I learned to drive, which is about incest. And there was this guy sitting next to me. And when he sat down, I was like, what is this guy doing at this show? He just didn't look like someone who would buy a ticket to see a live play. Right. He, he's in the middle of the first act. He is just weeping. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow, this is really getting this guy, mm-hmm. you know, and like, I'm part of that. Mm-hmm. Like I put this on the stage and this guy is here, like coming apart. Yeah. And I haven't felt that way in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So feeling, feeling connected to something that really impacts people and Mm -hmm. you're not getting that with your current work. No. Like when, when the Blair family comes from San Diego, they're going to barely remember my name. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I can even eat. And I imagine even if it, they did and they appreciated you, it wouldn't bring up the emotion that you just showed talking about how this oh, play yeah. impacted people. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. It was good stuff. I enjoyed theater a lot. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Great. So this statement, I want to be closer to my aspirations. Let's start from a place that you're a hundred percent responsible for that. You are not your job, not okay. young people, not families moving into the area, not the job, not the house not whatever the design is going to be. Let's say that you are responsible for that 100%. I want to be closer to my aspirations. What changes, if anything, when we start to take 100% responsibility for that? I have pondered that many, many times, almost daily in some, at some points. So I guess I don't, and we, what was your question again? What might, what might this scenario look like if we were to take a hundred percent responsibility for going forward? I'm not interested in rear view mirror at this point, yep. but if I'm clear that I want to be closer to my aspirations and I am able to choose my responses, if I'm, if I'm unhappy with how the responses and how they're impacting my day-to-day life right now, then what's, what's possible looking forward? If I were to choose different responses. I think first I have to kind of identify at this point in my life, what my aspirations are. Great. Um, I think I would have to sit with that for a while to really put my finger on it because I've been in autopilot a long time. Well, if you're open to a reflection, a lot of times we, we are confused about the what, the specific outlet. But you've, you've got a lot of things here, meaning that we know that whatever it is, 
It's going to live in the neighborhood of meaning and satisfaction. It's going to be about connecting, helping people learn, helping people enjoy themselves, having an impact on others. So we know it lives in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the what you do may continuously shift, but those qualities may not. Those attributes may not. So you may find it enjoyable to do X, Y, Z in theater, but then it moves more into a different direction. But you're, you may still find that you're helping people connect and learn and enjoy themselves. You're helping them have a, a, a significant impact, positive impact. Mm -hmm. And so a question that we might start to live into is, instead of, okay, where am I going to find the thing? It could simply be, it, we treat it like a little fire, like, a, like we've got a little flame in our hand. And I want to add just a little bit of air, a little bit of fuel every day. I'm not going to snuff it out, throw a big log on it. Mm -hmm. But I could wake up today and say, you know what? Everything's looking pretty much the same, but what might I do today that might help me connect with somebody or help somebody learn something, help somebody enjoy themselves? What might I do that might provide an impact for myself and others? Mm -hmm. And little by little, day after day, Imagine getting good at that. Imagine getting good at answering that question. Imagine getting good at looking and finding those opportunities. Mm -hmm. And all the places in your world where that could start to happen, like just it's happening all around you because you're essentially tending this garden. Mm -hmm. Instead of I'm gonna, I got to wait back here until I find the thing and then I'll go and do it. Something like that. I got you. Which, yeah. which is what yeah. a lot of us tend to do. Well, and I'll go read the books and listen to the podcast and sit on my ass for another six years. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Creating that every day. Looking for it every day. Looking for a way to help someone. I'm just going to write this down. Mm -hmm. Help someone learn, enjoy themselves. And I guess it's enhancing, I guess. I, I, I've, I've raised, uh, well, I've raised two kids and I've got a third coming right now. Um, and one of the things that really feeds me is, is to watch them. I, I don't know how else to say it, but enhance themselves mm. to be in a surrounding where they can be a little vulnerable, a little curious. Mm. And I'm, I'm, I'm the one behind going, yeah, they catch the ball. You know, mm -hmm. like that, I, I call that enhancement. I don't know if that's looking for the opportunity to enhance. It feels more open to me. Yeah. It feels more like the person can decide what enhances them. I'm just here to like, make sure you feel safe doing it. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And just be, but, but looking at that, right. I can be on autopilot, like you said, and I can also be in this place where I've already, after all the years of doing this, where I kind of know what's going to happen and I'm not looking for anything. I'm just doing what I got to do to get by. Well, now this adds another layer of complexity to it. Adds another layer of challenge. I'm going through my day, but now I'm looking for these opportunities for connection, for learning, for enhancement, as you said. My work is just the background. It's just the thing that, has me moving around through the day and doing my thing and puts me, you can't force it on people. But again, it is about trying things. It is about experimenting. And, and here's the thing is that, you know, we tend to want results very quickly. Can it, can it be okay for you to fail miserably? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. And it can be. That this is a lifelong thing. Like I said, I don't see this going away. Uh -huh. That even if you, never pick up a, a whatever kind of tool ever again, you're still probably going to enjoy enhancing people's lives, helping them enhance their, li their lives to themselves. Mm -hmm. So this is another skill that you develop. And it's looking for opportunities and learning how to create those opportunities, learning how to co-create those opportunities with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I can see that being incremental, something that's learned along the way. You might even start to look like, who's doing this naturally or who does this in my life? And you're like, wow. I can even study them. How do they, 
how do they do that? And uh-huh. it's, you know, it's some guy working at the, the store. It just lights up everybody's day somehow. How does he do that? It's a <laughs> magic trick he's got, you know? And right. there are people that just, <laughs> just have this ability. And you say, well, what if I were going to study that? Mm-hmm. There was a lumber driver that whenever he would show up, he'd be dropping the lumber off. And then he would just say this phrase. And it was different every time. <laughs> but he had this great relaxed feeling to him. And that just came to mind as you were saying that. Like he was definitely enhancing people just with his little, he'd, he'd hand you the receipt and he'd say, yep, sometimes just a dog is a dog, you know, or something like that. <laughs> It was fantastic. <laughs> you know, they were uh-huh. simple, but like after you turned them around a couple of times, you're like, wow, that guy, that's good stuff. Here's another aspect of this, which is where is this person coming from in their lives, right? So if I'm coming from my place of burnout and aggravation and things should be different than they are, and I'm disappointed, that's all valid. It all gets to be there. But what we might find is that our practice then becomes, you know, for me, I don't know what this would be for you, but for me, I I practice coming from love. Before I started our conversation today, I made a commitment. I'm going to start from love. I still have my day going on. I still have my things that are frustrating for me and that are challenging for me. But what I wanted to bring to you was that love, coming from love. And what you might find is most impactful is whatever you choose to orient towards and make that a practice. Hmm. The sayings and the way that you're being are an expression of that or an extension of that, not so much the skill you're, you're doing, right? Because I could still do my skill. <laughs> In fact, if I try to do this with my wife and I'm, because I'm trying to change her and fix her, it doesn't work. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So... So if you say you're coming from love, but your trajectory is to spread love or, I mean, I would got a little confused. Well, I want to help you find that for yourself. Okay. So if we come back to this, what's underneath connection and learning and enjoying themselves and impacting people and enhancement, right? What's that an expression of from you or through you? What's expressing your, itself through you or as you? What would you call that? I'm not quite sure. Let's go back a few minutes ago when you were telling me about this man in the audience at the play. Yeah. And the emotion that was there and seeing him impact. What, was, what were you feeling in that moment as you were describing it to me? It was kind of just wonder. Wonder. Yeah. Because I, had, at that point in my life, I was in my early 20s. And um, I had seen good shows come off well. But I had never seen somebody like, like that guy was trying to crawl out of his skin. Hmm. Um, and I, I was just like, wow, look at when all these elements come together, what can happen here? Even and even though it was a very emotional moment, like I didn't even want to be there for a moment of it, because um, it was just kind of raw. Looking back on it all these years later, I'm like that was wonderful, mm. in the very like basic form of that of that experience, because it was it was full of mystery. I'm like, how did this happen? Why is this person here? Um, what's going? What what what's in their past that's like informing their reaction to right now um how is it that this room and these lights and those performers are are entering this man's world and like ripping it down Hmm. and it was yeah i guess wonder would be the thing beautiful yeah I, i wrote down a few things that you said wonder raw wonderful mystery and then I noticed that there was this curiosity that you had about uh-huh. the whole thing. Yeah. And so if we were to think about kind of bringing this back down to earth on a daily basis, what would I do that would inspire wonder or bring me closer to wonder today? 
huh. the mystery. Where do I find my curiosity? Where does my curiosity even want to lead me? Yeah. Yeah. And see that butts up against another thing. Like I hate questions. <laughs> <laughs> what you hate you hate being asked questions or you hate asking I just, people? My dad like was very not into questions. Th they definitely put me on edge. So like um, you don't like being interrogated, that kind of feeling? Uh, yeah, I don't like interrogate. Like I, it's not so much that as like I want people to just get it. Oh. Like yeah, I'm like oh. I don't do I, why do I have to explain this? Okay. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes perfect sense that you would have this other part of you that's like, but I also where's the wonder in the world? <laughs> You can guess I'm a Gemini. Uh, uh, maybe you can't. I don't know. But I yeah, I don't um, know anything about that stuff. So okay. I don't. I don't know much about it, but I know that I have definitely two of me at okay. once a lot of the time. Okay. All right. Well, this is good. This is good about kind of the know thyself aspect. So if I'm burned out, burning out means I'm, I'm kind of doing the same thing over and over again, and I'm employing willpower and grit in order to keep doing that thing over and over again. And I'm running out of steam. And one uh, of the things that wakes us up or jolts us out of that place is new experiences. One, uh, yes. Novelty. Yes. And so we can thank the part of you that wants others to just get it. And he probably wants you to just get it. But the doorway here for you, the doorway here, is every time there's that frustration or that rock in your shoe of God damn it, just get it. Yeah. There's a doorway. Oh, there might be wonder here. This might be the place. Uh huh. And I would never see it otherwise. Yeah. That, uh, agitation is always a good place to look for something new. You can play with it. You might not notice until the, the ride home. <laughs> right. Like, oh. Yeah. oh wow, I shut the door on like four things today. Okay, well, tomorrow I'll get a little better. Maybe only three, yep. right? And then, yep. you, then you start yep. to turn into it and you bring that curiosity. Mystery, mm -hmm. what's here? What if, I, mm -hmm. what if I didn't know everything and I didn't expect this person to know everything either? Yeah, you know, and on a side note to that very thing you're talking about right now, um, I think one of the things feeding burnout for me is the sense of being like I'm male and I'm in a construction world and I'm supposed to know, mm -hmm. right? And I've just taken up this management role. And that's one of the things I like about the group of people I'm working with is they're very helpful. Um, and you can ask them questions. Um, but it really has made me uneasy. Um, it's to ask questions to, to just to put myself in a place where I don't know, oh. you know, it's frustrating for me to make myself like here, here's who I am. I don't know framing, but I'm in charge of making sure you get it right. Sure. It's vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah. Just put up the front, be the male. I don't know if that has anything to do with men in particular. I think, I think just egos like to be strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like, all right. Yeah. You have a choice here, and that's all I want to help you see is that recognizing that you can sleepwalk through this gig that you've got. You can sleepwalk through a lot of what your life has right now. You've been at it a long time. Your brain is hardwired things and just knows what to do. It's also why there's no wonder. Yeah. Right? No new pathways. No new pathways. So to remedy that is to recognize where you could bring that curiosity with discernment, with discernment that if you want, you can go and find mystery. You can go find novelty. You can go find wonder. Uh -huh. And recognizing where the need to look a certain way or appear a certain way is part of a defensive structure. It's a part of a survival structure, but it's your choice. And we're back to 100% responsibility. As long as I choose that, I'm also closing the door on wonder and mystery and all the other beautiful things that I said that I want that I'm that are aspirational for me. Yeah, this brings to mind something that uh, Pema Chodron, I've read her off and on for many years, and she'll tell you, like when you feel in a place where you're stuck or you're repeating 
she'll just say, just, just do something different. Just do, just whatever you do, don't do what you did before. Do something different. Let's get specific about that for you. Because if you've named, you've named it a few times on the call, which is there's something about appearing a certain way. And you've kind of talked about the culture that you're in, right? Uh -huh. All right. And the, my takeaway, and please correct, I want you to use your words here. But my takeaway is that it's about appearing as if you're an expert and that you know your shit. Yeah, that's definitely the world I live in professionally. Okay, great. There might be other places that we're doing that in our lives. It might be a habit. It happens at home. Sure. And so it's professionally and at home. Okay. Right. Yeah. If we imagine we could slow down everything, we could, we could imagine that we could slow down all of the choices and the interactions you have. And you could have a choice. I could be the guy that continues to be the one that knows everything or knows most, knows more, and continue to put myself in that situation and find situations where that's where I'm comfortable. Or I also have other choices where I could be curious. I could be the guy that's here to learn. I could be the guy that is open to something new, something novel. I can recognize that I have those choices here. Choices. And the reason I bring that up is because usually we're pretty committed to this I idea of ourselves being the one that knows what to do or knows how to do things or whatever. So I, I want to name that because there might be some resistance there. To making different choices? <laughs> well, to being something other than maybe the one that's got all the answers. What's another option here? If I were to invite wonder, if I were to invite mystery. Oh, I like that. I want to help you identify what gets in the way of you inviting that. And it might be the part of you that needs to have certainty. Okay. Hmm. Part that needs certainty. Okay. So let's see. All right. So I know I could do this because I'm used to doing this and I'm pretty sure the outcome will be that, that. But if I wanted to invite wonder, if I wanted to invite novelty, if I wanted to invite mystery, another possibility. I could do X, Y, Z too. Let's see. And there might be days where it's like, you know what? Not tolerable, not today. And there might be other days where it's like, yeah, let's see. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I'm trying to place this in my everyday life. Like tomorrow I meet with the guy who's the plumbing contractor, right? And I've, I've met him a couple of times already. He's a very nice guy, easy to get along with. And so I'm trying to think like, how could I invite wonder when I'm talking about where we're going to put the HVAC system in this house? <laughs> okay. That may not be the place, but what is it that you wonder about him? What are you curious about him? Is there something about this person? Maybe you've known him for, maybe you've known of him for years, but there's always been a thing you've been curious about with him and you never asked him. Because it might be awkward or it might be weird or whatever. Yeah. And so after you guys wrap up the, the work conversation, it's like, hey, this is a weird question. I feel a little uncomfortable asking. Do you mind if I ask you a question about X, Y, Z? And you're like, yeah, I'm glad. Nobody really asked me about that or whatever. But it's, it's uh -huh. following that curiosity. Uh-huh. And then it's like you're sitting next to that guy in the theater and you, you see somebody next to you that you didn't see there before. Uh-huh. This is called soul vision, by the way. It's learning to see through people's exteriors. Who are they underneath? Okay. We're all projecting this thing, I've got it together, or I'm this person, or I'm that person, or whatever, and the bumper stickers on my truck, and the shirts that I wear, or whatever. It's just like, all right, but who are you really? And that's what you saw in that, that person. All of that exterior, the part of you that judged and had you put him in a box immediately. Whoa, what just happened? Because yeah. you got to, he revealed something more about who he really is. Mm -hmm. So imagine being curious about that. People that tend to piss you off or you judge them quickly. Oh yeah, I already know who this guy is. He's an asshole. Right. He might be an asshole. <laughs> but what made him an asshole? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> what, what particular fragrance of asshole is he? <laughs> Or the yeah. person that lights up your day when you're checking out at the grocery store. It's just like, wow. Uh -huh. 
Maybe we could write some of that down. <laughs> it's the little things. Right, right. You said the driver that has a saying. It just like brings light. He brings love into his interactions. He's, a, he's willing to allow that light to shine through. Well, what if you go looking for it? Yeah, I like that. Soul vision. More than meets the eye. All right. What if I were to get curious about this person? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The person, not the tech, not the technician or the role or the information. Who are they? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting you say that because I've found myself doing just that um, in some of my professional conversations with people. Um, and there's a mixed reaction to like, some people will really open up um, and other people will just be like, I got to go. I'm on to my next thing. Sure. You know, so yeah, not the place or the time. Um, in what you say, discernible, curiosity at discretion. At discern yeah. And also recognizing that it's more of an invitation to join you in that place. Some people yeah. are dying to have a real conversation right. and others are just all business. So which one are you going to be? Right, right. And yeah, it's interesting because I've, I've kind of been tracking myself over the last probably four years of like, when you start to work with a new group of people where, where I, like in the world I'm in, um, I find myself in this like four to six week area of being very one dimensional, right? And then I'll get comfortable and I'll have those sorts of conversations like you just talked about, like, okay, let, let's, let's find out who you are. Let me see a little bit of you. What makes you go? Just that, even that awareness right now, there is a, fee, is a huge step forward, is to just awaken to your own curiosity. Mm -hmm. But that's an option. It's like, what would I love to ask this person? But even if you mm -hmm. don't do it, but if you're driving away and you, you, okay, now I can, I'm here and I'm present and it's just me and my truck. What would I love to have asked that person? And what this does is it flexes that muscle is that curiosity muscle. Yeah, it does. Beautiful. So let's talk about how you could apply this. I want to hear from you. How might you start to apply these ideas? Start to play with them. That's what I want you. I want to, I want to invite you to play with these ideas. You know, what comes to mind right away is to, is to be more like my six-year-old daughter. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because she... <laughs> she doesn't quite understand the social part of like not sharing everything she knows <laughs> right away. <laughs> and it's, it's so disarming because she's six, you know, right. <laughs> but for a 53 year old, like that comes off totally differently. Okay. Um, but there's this wild curiosity about her. Mm. Like she's only telling you all that stuff because she thinks you've got more. She sounds yeah. great. Oh, she's an amazing child. She's your teacher. Yeah, she is a advanced soul, <laughs> I'll say. Unbelievable. So that's a life. great that that's a great touchstone, right? So you can imagine being able to tap into that. Like imagine she's there. It's like somehow she's a companion with you. And it's not that you're uh -huh. gonna be a six year old in that. But right. there is a spirit to that. There is an energy of that, of that, that uh -huh. leaning forward and just, I just ask the question or I'll just share or I'll just, right. you know, what's right. your favorite unicorn? As if everyone has a favorite unicorn, right? But it yeah, just, right. That doesn't have to be what it is. But just like right. how bold and playful and not concerned about how she looks to others. Like that's really when I, that's all, she's doing it all right there. Bold, yep. playful, willing to get over herself. She hasn't even figured, yep. not even worried about that. So yeah, that's the, the first part of it is like borrowing her spirit, <laughs> you know, I her, that. um, yeah, that little, that little ad, like pre-adolescent spirit is so wonderful. Yeah. That's really it. There it is again. Wonder. There it is. Yeah. yeah. So how could you bring more of her spirit into your day that, that is applicable to your day? Sounds right. Like. Yeah. I think it'd be really fun for you to say, okay, I'm going to intentionally create three conversations today. I'm just going to, I'm going to ask that question. I'm going to put this out there and it's, it's okay if you fail. We're not, we're not looking for the win here is just getting in, getting out of what you've been in and into uh -huh. accessing this curiosity 
and being willing to tap into, yeah, what is it that I'm curious about this person at the grocery store or at, you know, whomever I come across and just to get into that place. And over time, you'll learn what starts to work. Yeah. And then you might even drive home and you'll have that vulnerability hangover. Like, I can't believe I asked that question. Oh my God. And then you realize you're okay. You survive. It's not a big deal. Right. 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 And you just get good at it. Right. (laughs) For a while, (laughs) for a while, I used to ask people um, on the job site, is this a part of your rock and roll fantasy? Remember that? (laughs) You remember that song? Yeah, yeah, of course. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And it would it would start some great conversations. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Just first right of all, on. identifying what is my rock and roll fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. You know? What I'm noticing in you versus where we were an hour ago, I see your light. I see your playfulness. I see you have a natural smile. And like I said, this is we're not waiting for work to give it to you. We're helping you come from this place. So I called it love. Maybe for you, it's play whatever it is, but I want to help you start to orient from yeah. this place. There's this idea that the thing I do over here is going to give that to me. And I want to help you start to come from that place. You've got to nurture that fire. And I see it in you. It's there. Uh, I think uh, the God I definitely identify most with is pan. Huh? Yeah. And that playful nature is definitely a big part of who I am. Okay. But it's been so not fed okay. lately. So what yeah. feeds Pan for you? What feeds that energy for you? Is it comedy? Listening to comedy? Is it? What is it? You know, I I'm a trickster. Um, I I don't want to hurt people. Uh huh. Um, but I enjoy a good trick. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, just <laughs> something out of the out of the ordinary. Okay. Um, presenting something that you thought you knew back to you in a new way. Yeah. You know, like the rock and roll fantasy. Yeah. You know, like whose song was, I don't even remember blue oyster Colt. Who sang that song? I, can't I don't remember know. either, but yeah. Um, but it, you know, it's, yeah, here's a lyric you hear every time you're in the supermarket, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to give it back to you and like, make you think about it. Yeah. That's that feeds me. That gets people grinning. There you go. You know? Yeah. So that's, if you were a musician, this is, this is the frequency you're going to tune your guitar to. That question did it all right there. I saw the, I saw you light up. I could see that you, you were able to access people in that way. I Uh I want you to get good at accessing that and good at tuning to that. You start your day, whatever that is. And there might be, there's going to be days that are tough. Yeah. Cause life's happening. Right. But this is the practice part of it coming back to, all right, where's this playfulness, this trickster? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. You're coming from a place of love. I understand that. And that's probably why I was having a hard time identifying with it because I don't I don't feel like I come from that. I feel like I come from a place of playfulness. Great. Then that becomes a discipline for you. Like not to take the fun out of it, but imagine waking up and and while you're drinking your coffee or whatever it is you do, it's like, what am I going to do today? That's going to be a little play. What kind of, what kind of shit am I going to stir up today? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm also, I think I'm going to get a crock pot for the job site. Okay. Cause that's a good place. Food. That is a good place. I love food and I love to cook. So awesome. Good. When are you getting your crock pot? I'll get the crock pot as soon as I find one at the thrift shop. Okay. Yeah. I like thrift shop stuff. Okay. Um, or maybe even sooner than that. Um, cause I, yeah, I've thought about that for years. Just take a crock pot to work. Love it. Put some stew in there. It smells good. People gather around it. I love this idea. I love this. And what I'm noticing is that we, if we, when we access this part of you, you've got ideas, you've got a natural font of, I could do this. I could do this. I could do this. Oh yeah. It's just this permission piece. Yeah. 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 And like my own, my own self, just seeing that it's worth the effort. Sure. You know, people are not all just shit sticks. Like it's, they're okay. (laughs) There's still (laughs) some shit sticks out there, but we can, like I said, soul vision. We can, we can see through (laughs) that. Yeah. 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 Still love them up. Right. Okay. Right. Give them some stew. Give them some stew. Everybody gets some stew. Okay, man. So here's what I would love. 
how far out was it a month? I, I would love to hear from you in a month, let's say, and hear how these experiments are going. And I'd love to hear about a yard sale or two where it just went sideways and you drove home and cringe <laughs> or whatever. That's part of the learning process. It's part of the play, playful process, right? Right. So yeah. Would you be willing to send me an update in uh, a month from now? Sure. Do you want an email? Yeah, I would love that. All right. And you're going to want to hear about the crock pot. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to hear about what's, what's tuning you, what you're tuning to and what's working and what's not working. And yeah, this is, we're not going to get it right. But like your daughter, she's not trying to get it all right. No, no, she's just experiencing the world and she does it in a delightful way. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Very delightful. She's your teacher. Uh, my Buddha. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what a good kid so i'm i'm curious like why why are you doing this now i love this it you know this well this is actually pretty similar to what you're talking about where i don't know what's going to happen on these calls uh-huh I, I don't have a script i don't know where we're going and then they get to have a, a conversation an hour and some you know so later it's just wow, that was really fun. I got to connect with someone I wouldn't normally get to connect with. And uh -huh. they're going to go out in the world now and create a little ripple or a wave of some sort. And then I'm going to hear about it. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Because I've been thinking about this for a couple of days and I'm like, huh, I wonder how this is going to go. Um, <laughs> Me too. Of, yeah. And I've always <laughs> listened to the, the podcast and I'm like, wow, this guy seems like someone I could just talk to over the fence. Cool. And I'm, and I'm, I'm also glad that, i don't know how this coaching thing got going but i'm glad that it's happening it seems like there's a group of people out there that have gotten to a place and they're just like i just want to help yeah yeah and it's 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 uh in the times we're living in it is a, a ray of hope very cool that's good yeah. to hear man yeah awesome well i'm going to be on the lookout for your update and in a month and go play that's your that's your directive go play <laughs> If these interviews are helping you, please leave a positive review on whatever podcast app you use so that others can discover the show more easily.